All right, let's go ahead and do this problem. We'll solve for x, and then we'll check our answer at the end. So to do this problem, uh, since these are all fractions, each term is a fraction, what we really want to do is get rid of the denominators so that we have one smooth equation, which will then help us to figure out the answer. But <clears throat> just to start out, we can see that x cannot equal 0 or 1. All right, and the reason that is is because when x is 0, this fraction here, right here has the denominator of 0, which makes it undefined. Same with 1. Both this fraction and this fraction would then have a denominator of 0, giving us an undefined value. So we know that x can't be 0 or 1. So again, moving on with this common denominator stuff. As you can see here in the top left, I multiplied both the numerator and denominator by x. That means that we've essentially multiplied this fraction by 1, but we've split the 1 up into something else that equals 1. Because x divided by x does equal 1. And we'll do the same thing to this fraction over here. All right, and then finally, we multiply this fraction here in the middle by x minus 1. So the reason I'm doing this is because we can see on these two terms where the denominator is x minus 1, they don't have an x by itself. So we make this a quantity and multiply it by x in order to have this same denominator x. Now, on the other side of this, this x doesn't have an x minus 1 to multiply by, so we multiply both the numerator and denominator by x minus 1. Again, what this does is it gives us common denominators amongst all three terms, which then allow us to rewrite the equation without any fraction. So the denominators have been eliminated here, but I kept everything that was in the numerators. x times x plus 3 plus... Okay, that's the same operation here. x minus 1 times x plus 5 equals, there's our equals, 3x plus 1 times this x. Okay. The next thing we're going to want to do here is distribute in all three terms like this. So distributing that x minus 1 into that quantity x plus 5, we're actually going to use FOIL technique, right? like this. And this is the new equation that we have. So again, after distributing here, we get this, these two terms. The FOIL will give us four terms, and this distribution will give us these two terms. After this, we just want all of the terms on one side of the equation, or the equal sign, so that it's equal to zero. Then we can factor out that expression and equate both of the factors to zero. So as you can see right here, I've just rearranged some of the terms. I moved this x squared here, and I moved this 3x over here. So they kind of just switch places here. What that does is it just aligns all of the like terms next to each other. Negative 5 here, this minus 5. doesn't have any other like terms to combine with it. So after combining these two, and after combining these three here into the 7x, we also have that 2x squared. And then this is all minus 5. And we haven't done anything yet with this 3x squared plus 1x. But we can now, so let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see, we've just subtracted this 3x squared here and this minus 1x. But we have to do it to both sides of the equal sign. And this gives us that these two cancel out, and this equals negative 1x squared plus 6x minus 5 equals 0. And that's great because now we can factor out this equation in order to find uh, some values of x that will give us a 0. But the first thing we're actually going to want to do is to factor out a negative 1 from all three terms here. Uh, in order to make this leading coefficient positive. And this is the new equation that we have. Uh, the thing is, is if we divide both sides now by negative 1, 
then it really just allows us to get rid of those parentheses and it gives us also this new equation now the reason that works is because when we divide 0 by negative 1 it doesn't change the 0 All right. so factoring this out we should have two terms like this which should equal 0 both leading with an x there now since that's a minus 6x plus the 5 uh, it looks like we're going to need a negative 5 and a negative 1 here like this it, we could check this by foiling this these two factors and find that we get the same thing that we started with and equating both of these equal to 0 because if x minus 5 were 0 it wouldn't matter what was in here it would still be multiplied by 0 and same with this one okay so if we make x minus 5 equal to 0 we would find that x equals 5 like this so that should be a good solution there now if we do x minus 1 then we would add one to both sides and find that x is equal to a positive 1 but based on where we started right here x cannot equal 1 so this one actually ends up not being a solution okay now the final thing I would urge you to do again is to go back to the original equation plug x equals 5 just to make sure that both sides of the equal sign are equal in other words it would give you a true statement so be careful of that alright now I'll leave that to you but I will say that if you did that if you replaced x with 5 in this original equation you would end up with the quantity 4 equals 4 giving us a true statement alright thanks for watching this video I hope it wasn't too bad it's a little bit long these types of processes uh, some of you may find that you can skip some of these steps in between and that's fine as long as you check your answer that's the main thing if you're gonna skip steps you should always check your answer just to make sure that you're correct otherwise if you're doing this stuff in your head you have probably made a mistake somewhere in there alright go ahead and click on the link to subscribe to my channel and uh, good luck on your math